All right, um, Mrs. Benis, as usual, thank you for your time, for your comments and the analysis on uh, these issues that uh, you are plenty of uh, knowledge on the Middle, Middle East issues. Today, the ICJ has issued an order to Israel to halt all the offensives on Rafah. What are your comments on this? As is always the case in decisions of the International Court of Justice or the Security Council for that matter, both of which are supposed to be legally are binding, they are not self-binding. They don't enforce themselves. They are only valuable as tools of both governments, in this case, South Africa, and civil society to pressure governments and particularly the government being charged here, the Israeli government, with abiding by this legal requirement. It's a very important ruling because it says explicitly that Israel has to stop its offensive in Rafa. And I think that's very important, partly because that was the basis on which the Biden administration said, if there were an offensive in Rafa, that would be a red line for the United States to stop sending weapons. That would be the most important obligation of the United States. The United States is a signatory to the Convention Against Genocide. And in that context, it is bound by this ruling of the International Court of Justice. So from now on, from today on, if the U.S. sends more weapons, knowing that they will be used in Rafa, it is not only a violation of President Biden's own promise, his own commitment, it is also a direct violation of the order of the International Court of Justice. And it's particularly important because this set of, of new provisional measures was supported by 13 out of 15, almost unanimous decision of the judges, the only exceptions being the temporary Israeli judge, and the judge from Uganda, who for reasons unknown, has supported Israel throughout this process. Everyone else, including, crucially, the judge from the United States, all were unanimous in supporting this position. So it now is a question of the, whether the United States will continue to send weapons and stand in violation of the International Court of Justice, or whether it will abide by the ruling of the court and stop sending weapons. The United States harshly responded to two previous uh, um, issues. First, the uh, International Criminal Court that uh, has uh, issued a warrant, I mean, asking for a warrant of arrest for Netanyahu. And second, three countries declaring Palestine as a state. United States harshly reacted, criticizing those, uh, those uh, things. It's going to be the same on, on this case. The, as we know the United States is always supporting Israel. It doesn't matter what. I'm afraid that we may see a very similar response, certainly from some members of Congress, probably from some members of the administration. I would hope that we will not hear that kind of language from President Biden, from Secretary of State Blinken, from the top officials of this administration. That would be a complete rejection of the legitimacy of international law. The US claims to be supporting international law. And if it stands in direct violation of a direct order of the International Court of Justice, this would be a travesty once again. There were other parts of the orders that were given by the court, including an order to immediately open the Rafa border crossing with Egypt to allow in massive amounts of humanitarian assistance. There has been no food getting into Gaza for the last eight days. And the UN said this morning, UNICEF, the Children's Fund, said that their warehouse of food is almost empty. That means that a massive escalation of famine is about to happen. And that will lead to an extraordinary escalation in the number of people dying because of explicit Israeli policy imposed and supported by the United States. This is the opportunity for the United States to change its ways. If it didn't want to respond to moral appeals to the uncommitted voters who were saying we can't vote for a president 
who is uh, who is supporting genocide for the thousands, I think tens of thousands at least, students across the country and around the world who are in encampments demanding an end to US support. If they're not willing to respond to that, they should at least be willing to respond to the requirements of law, to abide by the requirements of international law. Uh, we've seen a uh growing international support for Palestine and to stop this uh, genocide in Gaza. Have you seen anything like this before where the international community is standing and crying out against Israel's actions? We have not seen anything like this before. South Africa really broke the mold when they brought this case to the International Court of Justice. There has been in the past Many resolutions passed, mostly in the General Assembly, rarely in the Security Council because of the U.S. veto. But in the General Assembly, there have been many resolutions passed, but we have never seen anything like this kind of effort by South Africa, supported by the court, to actually hold Israel accountable, to make it real, to make it enforceable. And that is a stunning achievement in the context of international law. It's an opportunity for the rest of the world to stand on the right side of history. And it's an opportunity for the United States to move for the first time in its relationship to Israel, to move towards the right side of history. If they won't do it for moral reasons, maybe they will do it for legal requirements to avoid being seen internationally as standing in violation of the law. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mrs. Benny.